Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Grand Royal Class Cruises, written by Farm Witch 4275. I look up from my desk, surprised at the sight of a human, clad like some kind of heavily armored monk, standing in my office. He stood there with a noticeable smile and looking down at me. It was unusual to have a human around the station unless there was a problem. Humans were the Federation's problem solvers, so his mere presence was a matter of concern, not just for me, but for the entire station. Hello, I was not aware of a human delegation today. Is there an issue? I asked, gesturing for him to sit in the chair opposite my desk. Good morning, sir. Uh, there is no issue. I'm here to tell you about your welcoming gift for joining the Federation. Uh, it's finally ready, he said as he sat down. Gift? Uh, I was not aware of that kind of tradition. I tilted my stubby head to the side in confusion. No new members are aware it exists. Some never will. It isn't a gift per se for joining the Federation. It's more of a, a thank you kind of thing for fulfilling your obligations. Yours is finally ready for you to collect. He simply sat down calmly, smiling at me all the while. Well, uh, um, what exactly is it? I asked, curiosity getting the better of me. Two ships, custom built from our tank and your ship designs, specially made for you. One ship will serve in the Federation Corps fleet, and the other will be added as a ship in your own navy. He handed me a data pad and I looked at Hover. I see. Well, uh, we could always use more ships. Well, what are these ships like exactly? I asked with an eye stalk slightly tilted to the left. You'll see. We love giving gifts and things, sir. The surprise and shock makes it worth it. It is ready for collection. As a consequence, here, he handed me a very ornate letter with a golden wax seal. I took it, trying to be careful not to get any mucus on it. Oh, my. With this, you'll have temporary access to the human home star system. It'll detail procedures and operations for the exchange. Make sure you're on your best behavior, he said with a smile that tried to calm me down. I was not calm. This meant that we were one of the very select few that had ever seen humanity's home star system. 71 different species in the Federation, only 7 had ever seen it. And one of them came uninvited. They weren't around anymore. Oh, oh my, 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 my goodness. He just chuckled in a strange way that humans do. <laughs> uh, follow the procedures and protocol outlined in the letter. Bring a delegation ship plus a transport ship, a skeleton crew to just get the ships out of dock, and a minimum of 50 men for both ships. I, uh, I understand. Uh, uh, have a nice day, I said, the shock of the situation finally getting to me. Same to you, friend, he said with a smile. He gave me a bow and left calmly. I unsealed the envelope and read the letter. Dear esteemed colleague, congratulations. The letter is to inform you that your new Federation-sponsored warship pair is available for collection. These warships are a gift to you to signify that you have successfully completed all obligations set for you by the Federation and are built as a thank you for your service. These warships are custom-made of the highest quality materials, of the highest quality craftsmanship, with a technology that far exceeds your own Please bring a minimum complement of 100 Starship crew to allow you to take control. This is considered a skeleton or minimum operations crew. You can sort out an actual crew roster yourself when they are in full operation. Please find enclosed a data chart containing a series of one-time only single-use access codes. You will be permitted two ships, one troop transport to operate the ships, along with, with a delegation or diplomatic ship, no larger than a battleship class for this exchange. If we see more than two ships, or a ship of a larger class than specified, we will open fire. With sincere regards, revered father Julius Mortis, Philly Vacal, Calesto Drive Yards. Philly Vacal? What the hell is Philly Vacal? Well, I suppose if we were invited, we might must oblige. I must tell the Emperor immediately. The situation was somewhat astute. In our haste to arrive, we had no time to prepare. The Emperor seemed somewhat unfazed as he sat in my desk seat at the head of the bridge, sparks of stardust and space debris flashing past us as it disintegrated against the warp shield. We would be there any minute. I was nervous, damned nervous. So much so that there was more mucus from my tentacles than usual. 
The Embra, as per always, was dry as a desert sands. Two minutes to contact, the ship's pilot said, calling the ship to attention. Good, we are almost there. Nervous Kim Chach. The Emperor looked at me, smiling at my secretions. What gave me away? I chuckled half-heartedly, shuffling with discomfort. Make sure that we activate the cleaning apparatus before we disembark. It is all I'm saying. This is quite the occasion. He reached down and grabbed his beverage, a drink called tea that we have become somewhat addicted to. Bubble collapse in five, four, three, two, one, the pilot announced as we saw particles of dust around us beginning to slow. The soda system suddenly came into view. Everyone in the ship either did or, or barely held off the urge to spew defensive ink everywhere as we saw the massive fortress that was Sol. We appeared outside of Pluto, which had been turned into a gigantic static defense turret. A legion of hundreds of warships of every possible size and class immediately turned their attention towards us. I barely managed not to shit myself at the sight of the sheer quantity of cannons mounted on those ridiculous hulks of metal. Human warships had a different kind of elegance to them. Unlike most ships in the galaxy, human warships lacked in style and contours, making it up in size, armor, and sheer amount of weaponry. Even if they didn't have technological superiority, the sheer quantity by itself would make a fighting them nothing short of suicidal. We jumped out of our exoskeletons a bit at the sound of the hail. This is Soul Defense Fleet Epsilon 8. Identify yourself immediately. I am Emperor Jewish Chip of the Sarangati Imperium. We have an invitation to be here. My Emperor, ever the stoic master, barely flinched. Please hold for verification. We have you on schedule. Our instruments went crazy at the action of six dozen warships scanning us at once, all of us collectively trying not to ink ourselves. Verified. Proceed, Vector 330 by 488. Callista Docks Bay 47. Copy that. The pilot had to stop himself and clear his throat to stop the squeaky voice. <coughs> uh, copy that. Uh, we're in motion. I heard a subtle laugh over the comm as the radio crackled out. Human ships dispersed with two of the larger cruisers forming up with us. It took us about an hour in sublight speeds to get there. It was truly an incredible sight to see. Thousands, tens of thousands of ships, all human design, all operating in near-perfect concert as they drifted in space around the star system. A few smaller craft, mining vessels, and cargo ships decided to come closer to us to figure out what we are. A few humans could be seen through the windows, and we waved at them, getting a wave back in response. We arrived at Callisto, a barren, icy rock saturated in the human refining industry. It was here that I first glanced at them, the two ships, our ships, sitting in a dockyard, one in clear Federation colors and the other in ours, a stark contrast to human warships. I looked at some other ships while I could see them. Danthraki, Kasani, Olivarchus, Perindai, all of them just sitting there. What in the abyss are they doing here? Two ships, a pair for every species in the galaxy. Even the bioships of the Tilaxu Hive. How do they get these? The entire crew of both ships shared a concerned glance as we slowly moved into place in the only empty spot available. A soft thunk signaled we were docking to the station. The Emperor stood up, and we all instantly snapped out of our stupor to full attention. Right, let's go then. By the abyss, the system is uh, fascinating, he said as he headed towards the airlock. The security team that greeted us was minimal. One of the human ambassadors I knew well was here. The most striking thing I saw, however, was the group of seven monks standing nearby, wearing dark purple robes, gilded with gold trimming. Each one had a face mask of an intricate and handmade design, connected to a very high-quality pressure system. Under the robes, I could clearly see heavy augmentation and armor plating. Each one carried with him a plasma spear in his right hand, a pistol in his left holster, and a rifle of some kind on his back. We tried to ignore the sight and greeted my fellow ambassador with the Emperor's blessing, Andrew, my friend, so good to see you. I held my tentacle out to him. He grabbed it gently with a smile as we shook hands. 
Indeed. An incredible day, indeed. Uh, I wish you told us that you were coming. We would have set out a red carpet or something. Had no idea the Emperor himself was coming. Andrew bowed to our Emperor in greeting. The Emperor smiled. When given an opportunity to see the home system of the Federation's founders, do you think that we would miss this? Indeed. So you have probably noticed on your approach what exactly sits in these dockyards. I assume you are curious, he said with a very cheeky smile. Indeed we are. How did you get those ships? Even the Talaxu Hive Bioship, I said absentmindedly. We made them well. They did, Andrew said, gesturing to the seven monks nearby. Wait, what? These are called Grand Royal Class Cruisers. Battle Cruiser Class, modular design template with a full suite of custom weapons, high-grade materials and reactors. Identical to of a kind, save for the paint job. Come, you need to see it to believe it. Let's show you your first fleet ship, Andrew said with a heady smile, as we all filtered out into the viewing ports towards the ship. A layer of our excess mucus followed us, with tiny plate-sized robots behind us cleaning up the mess as a hundred of us squidged off towards the docks. We all gathered round the viewing windows, crowding around the dock as we looked at our new ships. I had a ship engineer near me. He had his face fully pressed into the glass, his bulbous eye stalks firmly squished against the plexiglass. He let out a loud, sensual squeal before collapsing in a wobbly heap on the floor. A babbling mess. Most other engineers or navigators likewise did the same. It was a collective orgasm of sorts. Both myself and the Emperor, along with a few officers, stood back at the sight and profusely apologized at an embarrassing display. The humans simply smiled at us, nodding knowingly, as if their own engineers suffered the same fate. Andrew held his hand up at us and offered the officers the first look at the interior. We walked in, and immediately one of our officers noticed something. The ship was uh, magnificent, beautiful, regal, divine. The air itself held the freshest starship air I could ever breathe, as if I were in my own home on my home world. The air had a faint scent of some kind of plant native to the human homeworld that my data slave described as pine conifer, and it calmed and softened as we breathed it in. The floor we squidged upon was soft, soft like the branches of our home world, and the mucus we left behind us immediately vanished, soaking up into the floor without a trace leaving it polished and immaculate. Every single surface, from the guardrails to seating tiles, is covered in an engraved pattern, polished to a near mirror shine, and sterilized to an absolute state of cleanliness. Part of the ships are made of a certain wood type that is used to make luxury furniture. It is varnished and cleansed to perfect shine. The ship fit perfectly into our biology and customs. Crew quarters full of large-sized aquariums that could keep us in comfort even under duress. Various holodeck displays containing our favorite pastimes and board games. The main bridge had control stations fitted to make us as comfortable as possible. Holodeck and solid screen displays for all the ship functions. The mess hall was already fully stocked, built more like a restaurant than a starship's mess hall. Every surface is sterile, clean. Tables made of our homeworld trees, chairs made of luxury metal, covered in a thick cushion of Arkanthian silk again from our home world. The engineering officers who followed us were bubbling, wobbling uncontrollably the more they looked at the ship. Wait a minute, w wait, something is off here, the Emperor said, taking a few close looks at the panel access point. He opened it, and the sight of the gears and pistons inside making an engineer squeal in delight. Mm, this is, this is, he looked at Andrew, is this entire ship Handcrafted. Andrew laughed. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Every part, piece, and component is fully handcrafted, from absolute scratch out of the best available materials specifically mined, refined, and processed by the ship's makers. Every single engine turbine blade is precision made and custom crafted in its own custom cast. Every pipe is precision crafted, every rating is hand welded, every single piece of the ship from floor tiles to plasma cannons, is all made by the master hands of our master craftsmen. The monks came into view from behind, and all of it is custom made by only seven men, built 
over two-year period. Plasma cells fully charged, reactor fully fueled, canteen fully stocked. She's ready to go at your order, the tallest of the monks said, handing me a velvet bag with the key cards and access codes. One ship, this ship, is meant for operation in the Federation Defense Fleet. You will crew it with a full complement of your best operators, and they will serve the greater hall in the Forced Recon Response Fleet. The other ship, in your colors, will be added to your personal navy and serve in whatever capacity you wish. We only wish for you to follow standard operation protocols when dealing with any issues or disputes. Don't use the ship to engage in personal disputes or vendettas. She has 50 times the reactor power and combat strength of a dreadnought, Andrew said calmly. So please, use the power wisely. This finally sent our officers over the edge, and they collectively arrived, in yet another face-palmingly embarrassing display. My emperor turned a shade of purple. By the abyss, he said, then joined the embarrassing display. But the other ships, the Tlaxu bioships, the, the, the Darthraki Covent, I asked and filtered through the access codes I was given. All to be collected, waiting to be united with their masters. When they can be proven worthy of their power, you have more than proven your capabilities, more than proven that you can be trusted. We look forward to working with you, Andrew said with a smile, holding out a hand for me to shake. I shook with more enthusiasm I knew than I could muster and stumbled over my emperor's babbling form as I headed up to the bridge, dragging a pilot with me. This will be awesome. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, but Maury, Terran on Air, Cold War Boom of Offen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. Thank you.